No spark, don't just throw parts at it. I'm about to show you how to test your ignition module two ways, in your hand and in the car. This one right here, confirmed bad, 100% bad. And by the way, we're working on a 77 C3 Corvette equipped with a Chevy small block 350. We'll start with the bench test. This is for when the module is out of the vehicle. This will catch a module that's completely dead. But just so we're clear guys, this test isn't gonna tell you everything. It won't confirm that the module is actually switching under load. It just tells you if it's dead or suspicious. Step one, set your meter to diode mode. Step two, we're gonna take our red lead and we're gonna put it on B. We're gonna take our black lead and we're gonna put it on C. You should read between 0 0.6 and 0 0.8 volts. This module reads 1.5, so this module is way too high. That means the transistor is leaking internally. This thing is toast. Step three, reverse your leads. Put black on B, red on C. You should see OL, open circuit. But this one is still reading about 1.4, 1.5. That means this thing is leaking voltage in both directions. Total failure. All right, let's move on to step four. Step four. Now we're gonna test the internal ground path of this ignition module. Go ahead, set your meter to continuity mode. This setting will tell us if there's a clear ground connection inside of this module. At this point, we're gonna take our black lead and we're gonna to touch our G terminal. We're gonna take our red and we're gonna to touch the base. We can either touch it here or we can touch it here. Either one is fine. But look, this is showing OL, open loop, no continuity, and I'm not getting no beeping sounds either. That tells me the internal ground path is broken. This module cannot complete the circuit, so it will never switch. Now remember, if this module was good and we had our leads in this orientation and it beeped, that would tell us that would tell us that the internal ground path is good and the sucker should spark. Now we could power this thing up and crank it all day, but if the G terminal isn't grounded through the base, it's useless. So yeah, this one's toast, 100% toast. That's one of the most overlooked causes of a no spark problem. And now you know how to catch it. So here's how this breaks down. The bench test will tell you if the module is flat out dead, but in the car test will tell you if it's alive and actually doing its job, switching. This isn't guesswork, it's real diagnostic. Stop firing the parts cannon, start testing it the right way. Now we're gonna show you guys how to test this thing while it's in the car and verify that it's switching. Let's get into that right now. In-car ignition module test. First thing that we need to do before we diagnose the spark issue is confirm that the ignition module, this, that's in that distributor is actually alive and doing its job. That means three things need to happen. We need to make sure that we have power, we need battery voltage at our module, our pink wire. We need ground, which means the distributor has to be properly grounded to the engine. And most importantly, the third piece of this puzzle, switching. We need to confirm that our module is pulsing coil negative while we're cranking. So step one, set your multimeter to DC and make sure the key is on and not cranking. Our red lead is gonna go to B plus terminal on the ignition module. That's our pink wire that plugs right here. It's right next to the tack wire. We're gonna take our black lead and we're gonna find a clean engine ground. All right, key on. And we should be seeing battery voltage here. So as you can see, we got 11.7. That's the same exact voltage in my battery right now. If you don't see 12 volts here, the module isn't powered and it can't work. At that point, that's where you're gonna have to check your ignition switch, wiring, or fuse block before even moving on to step two. So let's move on to step two because we have battery voltage where it's supposed to be. So step two. Ground at the distributor. 
Now let's check that the module actually has path to ground. We're gonna put our meter on ohms and we're gonna go right here on the distributor housing and we're gonna find a bare spot somewhere on the engine. Now this should read zero, zero. Perfect. You should see under one ohm, the lower the better. A good clean ground will read closed or close to zero. And if you want to, if you want, you guys can put this on continuity and listen for the beep. So this is telling us we got a clear path to ground. Ground is not our issue. If you get high resistance or OL, that distributor isn't grounded properly and that alone will kill the spark. Scrape the surfaces clean and run a dedicated ground if you have to. But this step can be skipped because we are good to go at that point. Let's move on to step three, switching on the coil negative C terminal. Let's get into it. All right, so for step three, I highly recommend stopping at Harbor Freight and grabbing this back probe kit, because like I said, we're gonna have to do some back probing and we're gonna have to crank this and the distributor is gonna spin. So we really can't get our hands or any leads in there. And that's why I'm recommending using these. And you'll see why in a second. So let's go ahead, let's pop our distributor cap off and let's just leave everything connected. We're leaving our tack and our battery positive as well. And we're not unplugging anything on this distributor. We're just popping the cap off. Now the final most important part, we're gonna check if the module is actually switching while we're cranking. Keep your multimeter on DC volts. Now we're gonna take our red lead and we're gonna go to B plus positive and we're gonna take our black lead and we're just gonna lightly back probe the C terminal and it's labeled C. Now just be extra careful when you guys are doing this because remember when you crank it, that rotor is gonna spin and you don't want nothing in the way. And also remember that this may arc. So make sure there's no fuel open or anything like that. Very important. So now I'm gonna have somebody crank it and we're gonna watch. A working module is gonna show pulsing voltage, jumping between zero and whatever the cranking voltage is, it's usually eight to 12. And again, this system is eight, so if it shows eight, I'm not too worried. And we are gonna address that in another video. Here's the setup. We got our red probe on B plus, and then we got our black on terminal C of our module. And now I'm gonna have her crank it, and we're just gonna watch our meter. Go ahead, crank it. Perfect. You see how it's switching and fluctuating? Now again, remember, this is a good working module. Now let me tell you what it would look like if the module wasn't switching. If we did the same test and the meter just sat at 12 volts, that module isn't grounding the coil. It's just sitting there. No pulse, no switch, no spark. That simple. If it sat at zero volts the entire time while we were cranking it as well, that means the module is stuck in a consistent ground. Again, no spark. It needs to switch. So it's not about seeing a specific number. It's about seeing the fluctuation. If it's stuck at the top or at the bottom, the module's dead. All right, so I showed you guys how to test it in the car and test it in your hand. And that's exactly how you guys are gonna test these full prong ignition modules. And just remember, they are super common. Everything I showed you in yesterday's video is really good information. And those are things that should be checked. So listen, if you guys enjoy videos like this, like, comment, share, subscribe. You guys know exactly what to do. I will catch you on the next video.